right folks, unboxing video. And uh, this is the Toshiba 43 inch 4K Fire TV Edition. And a uh, little disclaimer, I did not buy this. This was provided to us by a friend of the show. And uh, they actually did not want me to give them a shout out. Uh, but I thought this was really awesome uh, that they are letting me do an unboxing. Also, uh, a few videos I'll make before we get into the unboxing. I'm going to probably do a, a video on how this is for computer gaming. It is only 60 hertz, so I'm not sure I expect a whole lot. I will do an extensive review after I get familiar with it. So this is uh, primarily just an unboxing video. So if you are uh, looking for more, uh, take a look down below. Hopefully the link will be available by the time you look at this. If you want to know a lot more about this, I'll get into all the operational stuff at some point and give you my thoughts on this. And then we will probably also compare this to the RCA uh, RTU 4300, which uh, is another 43 inch TV, uh, which I do own. But uh, you know, that one is not a smart TV, so not necessarily a fair comparison, but we will look at the, uh, the overall picture quality. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And I've got it pretty cold in here, so I actually have a flannel on, if you can believe that. Your TV is fragile. Read this first. All right, so carefully remove packing material, use bag handles, do not touch the screen. All right, I'll probably fail there. So this is a Toshiba, which, um, you know, in the store, I've looked at these, and I can't tell you that I was all that impressed with the quality of the picture. So hopefully I will be impressed. There is your remote. And uh, just like a Roku remote, it's got some buttons for Netflix. Uh, this one has HBO and, ooh, PlayStation View, nice. So that's surprising to see that if this is really a Amazon Fire TV because I don't believe I can even pull up PlayStation View on my Amazon. I know I can't pull up Voodoo, uh, which is a bummer. But uh, there you go, pretty simple remote. You've got, uh, so those buttons, you've got a volume up and down, mute, this looks like it's probably a main menu button. Um, pause, play, fast forward, rewind. The ability to go up, down, left and right and push in the center for OK. Uh, home button. Looks like another menu, a return, microphone and power off. And so that's that. Let me put that to the side. Hopefully we're done with the knife. Okay, so in the styrofoam, we have the uh, bases, and uh, they look to be, you know, just cheap plastic. Nothing spectacular. Let me see a left and a right. So we will uh, go ahead and rip these out because we're going to need them. All right. Now the TV says don't touch the screen. And boom. So hopefully, if you uh, you may have watched my video of this being delivered, and uh, I'm not going to name, I'm not going to throw the delivery service under the bus, but they actually um, put it behind or next to the garage door, uh, almost in a blind spot for my 
wife's cart would hit it. Um, surprised, at, uh, surprised at that. Alright, so the screen, folks, looks to be okay, um, which is good because I gotta send this back eventually. Maybe we won't pause it. So, in the bag, you've got your instructions, you've got batteries, you've got your screws. Um, and that's about it. Now the uh, TV itself is pretty basic on the back. It's got USB, 3 HDMI's, USB, 3 HDMI's, optical out, not sure, uh, looks like mini stereo right there or the ability to um, audio out for headphones so you can hook a headphone in there coaxial then we've got ethernet and RCA I'll try to take some photos of that so you guys can see it uh, but you know pretty basic TV set alright so we're going to go ahead and turn this TV on for the first time and I have uh, pretty familiar with 4K TVs and the Amazon product so let's go ahead and just jump into it alright so starts up Toshiba Fire TV edition now from what I understand in my uh, little about a little bit of reading that I did about this that this menu that's gonna pop up here uh, even though, well, it might jump to a setup menu. We'll see here. But uh, there is a Fire TV menu, uh, I believe, that pops up every time. And there's a way to shut that off. Uh, so you don't always get that. So you can go right to your programming. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and set this up. I could hit uh, store use, but let's, uh, let's do this. All right. So... We've got all these routers here. Ridiculous number. I'm going to uh, type in my password and we'll we'll resume in a second. All right. So after you type your password into the network, it should connect. Connection successful. And uh, I will probably stream. Uh, well, of course, we're going to do it downloading latest software. What a surprise! This is to be expected with any uh, new TV folks. I think every 4K TV or every smart TV I've ever bought, I've had to do this. So it is downloaded. And it's pretty much what you're going to see at the house. TV's going to restart in a few seconds. Hopefully it will start back up. It's the fear I always have when you update anything that it will not start back up. So, I can't say that I'm a huge Amazon Fire fan. Um, Alright, so we've restarted. Here we go. Updating. Please do not unplug the power cable during the update. So while that's doing that, uh, you know this TV is not super thin, which um, some may not like that. It looks to be at least three inches deep. So with today's TVs, that is um, you know not the best thing. Width-wise, a little over 38 inches. All this information, obviously, you can get from the website. Stands almost 24 inches off the ground. And just so you can see it, you've got about uh, one and a half inches of clearance underneath it. So what I like to do in my videos when I actually walk through these things, Still updating. 
I've grabbed a 4K, 4K Blu-ray player, and I like to know will these fit underneath these. This one will not. So in my opinion, that's that's somewhat of a fail by Toshiba. Uh, they should make it just tall enough that your average 4K player will actually fit underneath it. Not a huge fan of that. Now, I'm not sure what the weight was. Hopefully I'll remember to get that for you. It was pretty light. I didn't have any problem moving the box around. So if you're watching the, uh, the video all through this, it's taken a good uh, 10 minutes, I think, just to get to this point in the setup. And uh, that's the way it goes with these TVs, folks. But uh, we're getting there. We are getting there. So I wish you, you know, you didn't have to worry about copyright strikes, copyright claims. I would, I would put a movie on, um, and we could, we could get a, a good look at it. But uh, you see how long this thing takes just to get to this point. So what I'll do after we update it, we'll shut it off, we'll turn it back on. And that'll give you a good idea how long it takes to load up, so you can see that part. And then, you know, something that's very important to me is to know when you go to something like Voodoo uh, that it is actually pulling up the 4K video out of those apps. Like, I know, I'm pretty sure we'll get it through the 4K Blu-ray player, but whether it'll work for the apps inside the TV is another story. You would expect it to work. Welcome to your new TV. Fire TV Edition is a smart TV. All right, so that's pretty uh, obnoxiously loud. Now, can I fast forward through this because I don't want to watch the video. Alright, so we're through there. Select your experience, full or basic. Access the content you love and control it with Alexa. So once again, I don't see the um, Voodoo app on here, okay? Which means that I'm going to have to have... Hopefully I remember to edit that out. I'm going to have to have something like the Roku Ultimate. Or uh, this is actually a Roku Premiere. I thought I had the old... One of them is a Roku Ultimate. So that is uh, kind of a bummer. Now, the fact Sony PlayStation View is in here, that's really nice. All right, do I have an Amazon account? I do, but I don't want to use it. I'm new to Amazon. So this is kind of annoying. So I don't know if this is like when you buy those uh, When you buy a um, one of their Fire iPads, yeah, I don't want to do this. This is not what I want to do. All right, let's do basic. Let's see if we can get through this. So, if you have an Amazon account, which I do, uh, you can set that up. I don't want to set up Amazon on here. Okay, so. Here's the menu, and there you go. So we're in. So you want to go to apps. You want to see the apps. Now, what do we have in here, folks? So you got Showtime, top subscription apps for you, entertainment. So I do have PlayStation View. To be 
Okay. PlayStation View. Netflix. Now, you know, the question will be whether I can rearrange these. And that is something that uh, one, if this is like a Roku, you know, if I click on that, download, you own it. So Netflix isn't automatically in there. You have to download it. Uh, this is just like a Roku. If you have a Roku, if you understand uh, certain apps you have to go and get to put on here. So once you have Netflix, of course at some point you're going to load it up. Sign in. So I'm going to pause for this moment. Alright, so we got Netflix loaded up, which is nice. Now we've got our different Netflix settings and boom we're in alright so you can go down scroll down here and see in Netflix this is an HD right so what's something that's actually we should see something pop up in 4k if this actually will play 4k Netflix That says HDR. Where's the? Usually I see 4K on there somewhere. So unlike when you watch this through the Roke, okay, here you go. So there is proof that the app will play something in 4K, which is uh, what I wanted to show you. All right, so that is good. Now let's go ahead and shut the TV off and see how long it takes to load back up. And that was actually, I don't know if it ever shut off. Now it's doing an update, folks. Doing an update. We're eventually going to get set up and uh, enjoying our TV. The remote... Okay, so the remote is being updated now. Do not press any buttons. We may take one or two minutes. So if you're watching this, go ahead and take a coffee break. I'm, gonna, I'm doing Diet Pepsi right now. This may turn out to be the longest video I've ever made, folks. So I must say, I did not have this much pain when I set up my LG, my JVC. Uh, I'm trying to think of the other smart TV we have. <laughs> this, uh, the Sony. Um, this is painful, folks. Alright, update complete. So, let me try that again. I'm going to shut it off. And I believe the TV actually does have a power off button. So that was pretty nice. It shut off pretty fast. On this side is a... Uh, oddly, um, it looks like a, a button that you use it. You go to the left, it's power. You go to the right, it's input. Alright, let's see how fast this boots up. 
I'm talking computers here, folks. Sorry. That is fast. Holy cow. That is the fastest TV I've ever seen. All right. So, so I did not see rope um, voodoo, which is negative. There's a nice screen for inputs. That's really quick to get to. Now the question I would have is if these are all HDCP 2.2 compliant. I would have to check that out with the uh, with the 4K movie to verify that. If you have Amazon Prime, pretty quick to get into. It would be nice if um, I think you can rearrange some stuff. Hopefully, so let's see what we can do because. I would love to rearrange the apps. Prime manage installed apps. So what can we do here? Okay, show all applications. So I think we can go in here and get rid of a few things, folks, because that's really what I want to do. Um All right, maybe that's not the way to do this. I don't want to use Alexa. Show all applications. So internal only should be probably the apps that you actually have installed. And that is probably what we want. If I go back, I'm only probably going to see Amazon and Netflix. So let's try and go back to it. No, sir. Not right. All right, so we're going to have to install this app. So I'll go back and do that. So that's not actually installed. All right, so One thing I, I never liked about my Fire Stick was the settings. Uh, if we go into inputs, just so you can see that, the same thing that we had before, right? Now, can we name them? Okay, can't name them. So that's a major bummer. That's a nice feature on some stereos. Oops, let's go back. There is an option button. I saw an option button at the bottom there. We hit the uh, three lines, change device name. Okay, so we can change device's name. What do you want to be connected? I want, I'm gonna call it a Blu-ray player, right? Okay, this one. Oops, we go back. All right, so that's how you would name things. Highlight the one you want to name, and then go in and change it. So we do have a PlayStation, but I'm going to call that one the Media Player, because that is what I'm going to use my Roku for. And then this one, we'll make this the PlayStation. It's easy to hit the wrong button with this remote. And I'm going to call that the PlayStation. I'm sorry. I'm going to change that. Did you see that? There was a Roku that actually listed Roku, one of their competitors. All right, so I've got my inputs set up the way I want them. Notifications. This looks like a bunch of annoying stuff. So we, um, let me see. Can we shut that off? We don't want to a bunch of notifications. Dismiss all. That cleans out our notifications. All right, network. We've already done that. Now, one thing I, I do not remember seeing, if this has a uh, Ethernet port on it. Okay, it does have an Ethernet port. So if you have your TV wired for Ethernet, um, 
you'll want to use that instead of the Wi-Fi because you will have much smoother streaming. Display and sounds. Let's go ahead and check that out. What can we do here? Back in here to picture settings. I'm not really sure why, but let's see. Okay, we can't do anything. Maybe we can do something. Let me go back. Click on HDMI 1. Over to the right, okay, we see to the right, we could change the picture mode. So this is a nice feature. Um, you could go in, probably make this vivid. Yeah, there you go. So movies, probably always going to be watching movies. So I'll go ahead and set that up for movie with my Roku. And you can come in here for each of the different HDMIs and change sharpness, tint, color, brightness, contrast, as well as, like I said, the picture mode. We go into advanced settings, white balance, dynamic. So these are nice settings to have in here. A little more than the average user obviously needs. Um, some people are probably going to screw those things up. Sound settings. Okay, so we can go in here. We probably have a sound, surround mode. Let's see. We've got music, movie, enhanced bass. Now I don't know how the the uh, how the speakers are on here. I think what we'll do is we will check out a video by yours truly, so that you can see uh, how it sounds if it starts crackling. Because I'm going to crank the speakers. And hell, it ain't my TV. So why not, right? Actually, that would be wrong of me. Display settings. So display, power on, home, audio, output. All right, so this is going to be your optical, fiber optic cable out, or audio out, um, TV speakers on. This is where you would do um, turn them off, turn them on. There should be a both. This one does not have both, so... Uh, digital audio format. So this is optical audio out. Auto. Um, so good idea to just leave that at auto. Bluetooth audio sync. Okay, so that is nice if you had a uh, Bluetooth device and you wanted to sync it to your TV, you can do that. And then hopefully you've got your TV hooked up to your stereo so you've got some good sound. Audio mixing. Screensaver, so you can probably say when to put the screensaver on. Amazon collection, when it starts. Okay, shuffle, might as well turn that on. So that's pretty nice. That is one nice feature that I forgot that the Amazon has. All right, so apps, controllers, Bluetooth. We're not going to set up Alexa because honestly, um, she's more, more of a hassle than she's worth sometimes. So device software accessibility, all right. Preferences, parental control, so you can lock your kids out of channels probably, and apps most likely. Sticks access to videos purchasing certain types of content. Privacy contents, data monitoring, location, that's not actually my zip code. Time zone, so you can change that as well. We're in Eastern, and we do like 24-hour uh, time here. Time zone is Eastern, so that is good. It is actually close to that time. So you can set a sleep timer on this, which is nice. I fall asleep a lot, so having that ability would be good. And device and software about your TV. So if you were having problems with your TV, this is where you would go um, to contact the manufacturer, tell them what your software version is. Uh, this also tells you your storage capacity and we're actually running out of uh, storage. That's kind of scary. and We haven't even put any good apps on here yet. Um, there's the serial number and the model number of the TV. There's the storage again, which is kind of odd. I, I actually, excuse me, I made a mistake. 4.27 gigs available. We have 3.77 gigs free, I believe. So 
I think we've just used that. This is actually kind of confusing the way it's shown. Um, this makes it look like it's very small. This statement makes it seem like you're using a lot. Network, there's that stuff. Install system update. All right, so if you ever had to reset your TV to factory defaults, you would do that in here. If you need to restart your TV um, in case it locks up, uh, I doubt you would be able to get in here and do it this way. And if you care about their legal stuff, you can get in there and do that. I'm not going to. All right, so we do have um, Echo Dot uh, Gen 2, Gen 3. So I could set her up with that, link everything, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Now live TV. So if you have an antenna hooked up, you could click on that, right? I don't think I'm going to get any channels. Um, otherwise, I would do the channel scan. Now I do have an antenna, and I may just uh, later check it out to see if I pick something up. And folks, that's about all that we're going to go over. Um, a lot of other things to go into. Obviously, spend more time in that application. Try and streamline it if you can. And, uh, you know, like I said, there is a way to get this TV when it starts up, not to go straight to uh, this menu from what I understand. Um, now, how you, what you would go to is another story. But uh, I'm going to set up some PlayStation View, watch some uh, college football here in a little bit. Thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.